you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Ever hear the name Borlar, Ken? Borlar? I should hope to tell you, Chief. All right. He was last heard of in Central America. Libertago, to be exact. He's believed to be planning a coup d'etat there. Uh, you realize what that would mean? Oh, sure. To be a threat to the whole hemispheric security. Right. And you can quote the authorities at Libertago on it. It's at their urgent request that you're flying there tonight. Plane leaves in an hour. Good. Uh, one thing, Ken. Borla may have his men in key spots, even in the government. Watch your step. Don't you worry, I will. There's uh, only one X, you know. <laughs> even in the alphabet. But seriously, Ken, if there's anything I can do. There is, Chief? Yes? How much did you give Pagon to find me? <laughs> Robber charged me 25 bucks. Mm. Slip him another 50 if he'll promise not to find me before I take off for Libertago. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, hello. Buenas noches. I am sorry to laugh at you. Oh, no, no, don't be. A laugh like that, nobody should be sorry for. Oh, senor, you say such a nice thing, and in such a way. <laughs> Lots of things I'd like to say, the same way. Mm -hmm. I hope I'll have until tomorrow noon when we get to Libertago. Oh, yes. And to think how much I had read this trip, Mr. What is your name? Thurston, Ken Thurston. I am Marie Virba. Marie Viva. But now I tell you why I laugh, yes? Yes. I sit down beside a man with hat over the eyes and his head held low. Not until the plane is off the ground does he raise his eyes to glance around. And all that time I might have been looking at you. Ah, there you are, Mr. Thurston. Oh, Pagan. I said to myself, now that the plane is safely up in the air, it is time to present myself to my employer. Employer? Victim's the word. Uh -huh. Uh, Senorita Verva, this is uh, Pagon Zellschmidt. Well, now, all right, Pagon, now you can go, go back to your seat. No. But I came to collect the money you owe me. Money? What for? Do you realize how much money it cost me to make my unestimable services available to you on this trip? Well, subtract the hundred dollars the chief gave you not to make your services available to me. But he only gave me fifty. I swear by the father of my father. Oh, I pipe down. Go back to your seat. I'll settle with you later. Okay, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> See how I trust? Ken, this is the man from whom you were trying to hide? I'm always trying to hide from him. Well, is it bad that he is along on this trip? Oh, well, it kind of keeps me from being alone with you. Are you sleeping, Ken? No, Mary, no. I just closed my eyes for a minute to make sure that I hadn't been dreaming all through the night and the morning. Oh, a few more minutes, Ken. We will land in Libertago. Oh, good. You have business there? Of a sort, with the Senor Florio. Oh, oh, Florio. You know him? Does anyone really know Florio? I do not think so. But you will be in Libertago long? Depends on how long you'll be there. I come back to Libertago to settle the estate of an only uncle. As soon as possible, I fly back to New York. That fits my plans perfectly. You said something last night about dreading this trip. Ken, there is in Libertago someone I fear. Well, anything I can do? Oh, no, Ken. Even the police here cannot cope with him. Bola. How did you know that? Small world, isn't it? But why does this man make you so scared? When I sing in a cafe in Libertago, he hears me. 
From then on, I have no peace. He wants to marry me. It's the first normal thing I've ever heard about the guy. You joke. Oh, sorry. What happened? Uh, I leave Libertago six months ago. I swear never to come back. But now? Now I come back with a pistol. Oh? But sometimes I wonder if even that will be protection enough against Borla when night comes. There's always Pagan. Pagan? Unless you can suggest some other bodyguard. Oh, kid. You will come? Of course I will. It would help to know the address. Number 17, Avenue Goya. Number 17, Avenue Goya. Mr. Thurston, Mr. Thurston, have you really to, to land? Yes, Pega. Good. No. On second thought, I think I'll wait and do it with the plane. I've been hunting all over the airport for you. Where did you disappear to when we got off the plane? Call from Washington was waiting for me, Pagan. The oh. chief is all head up about the situation down here. Ah, you should have told him I'm on the job. That's the trouble, I did. Now, let's grab that cab over there before somebody else does. Mr. Thurston, are they expecting us here? Only Senor Florio. He's only expecting me. But what about me? Like water, Pagan, you're going to seek your own level. I want you to mingle with the riffraff. Find out what you can about Baller. We can count on me, as all. Oh, yes. Drive up. See you, senor. Avenue, Gobierno, Numero. Look out, pig on duck. Pig, are you all right? I, I, I think so. Mr. Thurston, they tried to kill us. Yeah. But you said only Florio knew we were coming. That pig on is something I want to go into. With Florio. <laughs> I cannot shake it from my mind, Mr. Thurston, this attempt to assassinate you. Borla must have stumbled on the fact that you were coming. That's one explanation, Senor Florio. By getting back to business again, I have a suggestion. You have but to speak and it shall be done. I'm convinced that your government's right. Only one thing is holding Borla back. Money. Yes, Borla's got to have money, lots of it. The posting of guards at all the banks and big business houses has stymied him, temporarily. But he's going to get more desperate every minute. Senor, why don't you double the number of guards at the banks right away? At once, Mr. Thurston. I shall notify immediately Captain Oliphant, who is in complete charge of the campaign against Borla. Uh, uh, pardon. Uh, hello? Oh, yes, Captain. I'm with Mr. Ken Thurston, who has come from the United States to help us. Oh, rapidamente. What's that? Captain Oliphant has just made an important arrest. One of Borla's men? Yes, and I suggest we go and question him at once. <laughs> In here now, Mr. Thurston. Mr. Thurston, oh. tell him, I, you know this he's... prisoner, he, he seems to know you, Mr. Thurston. Yes. Uh, Captain Oliphant. Uh, si, senor. What name did this man give? Mr. Ga Thurston, you, you can't do this to me. I, I, a joke is a joke. But this man, they don't joke. They think I'm mixed up with Borla. Our spies heard him say he had valuable information for Borla. That was so he would look me up. I was trying to find him. I, I... Very suspicious. Uh, tell me, Senor Thurston, you have seen this man before? Oh, so many times. Please, Mr. Thurston. You can vouch for him, perhaps? His own mother wouldn't vouch for him. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Thurston. Oh, you can let him go, Captain. He's perfectly harmless. I'll ah. take care of him. Oh, ah. well, a, a thousand pardons for making you rush over here, Senor. That's all right, Captain. Matter of fact, I'd like to have a talk with you. Can we get together, say, uh, this evening? Oh, with pleasure. Uh, I also would be free, Mr. Thurston. No need to bother you, Senor Florio. Uh, pardon. <laughs> Hello? Si. Ah, one moment. Uh, for you, Senor Thurston. Me? Well. Hello. Oh, Ken. Ken. Marie, what's the matter? I saw him and I think he saw me. Oh, darling, I... You saw Bola? Where? Bola? Bola. Tell me quickly, Marie. On Camino Harano, near the museum. Hold on. Camino Harano, near the museum. Do you get it? See, si. I go. Senor Thurston, I will telephone you this evening. Come. Come. Uh, Come. Bola is getting bored. Hello, Marie. Ken, darling, I am so frightened. Paul is going to be too busy to think of you. But I'm so worried. I... Marie. Yes, Ken? Let me keep you too busy to think of him. What time is 
is it, Ken? Ten o'clock. Good Lord, ten o'clock. I was sure Pig would have heard from Captain Oliver by now and sent him over here. Maybe the Capitan has been detained. You said yourself that Borla might strike at any second. That's all the more reason, right? Who's there? Mr. Thurston! Mr. Thurston! There you are. What's happened? A big fire. Where? Well, it's at the government center. Maria, I've got to run, but don't worry. Pig will stay with you. But, but I like to go to fire. Well, this is one you're going to miss. Oh. Oh, now cheer up, Pagon. Where you're going sooner or later, they've got the biggest fire of all. Coming, Senor Florio. I've been looking for you. Uh, help! Oh, oh, Mr. Thurston. You, you might have been badly hurt in the crash of those timbers. Well, you could say I might have been killed. Uh, never will I forgive myself for having exposed you to such danger. I did not dream that the timbers were about to collapse. Why did you call me? Because, because where I was standing, it was so much safer. And I want to discuss with you this grave misfortune. It could have been deliberate, Senor Florio. Deliberate? What could possibly uh, be gained by burning down the government uh, printing office? And by whom? Well, Bola, for one. But how? I wish I had the answer to that. Oh, your pardon, Mr. Thurston, but I think you are mistaken. It is inconceivable that there could be any connection. How about uh, Captain Oliphant? Maybe he can point to a connection. I have searched for the captain everywhere. Not since he left for Camino Arana have I been able to contact him. He was supposed to have a talk with me tonight, as you know. Yes, yes, I remember. Senor Florio! Senor Florio! That fireman seems to have found something. Let's see. Huh? What is it, amigo? A body here in the rubble. Mm. Uh, he help me lift him. Ah, there. Uh, elephant. Ah, the Capitan, dead. Senor, he must have been helping fight the fire. Senor Florio, I said that maybe Captain Oliphant could point to a connection between Bola and the burning of the government printing office. He has. With a knife in his back. Continue with Frigid Air's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The threat of a coup d'etat against the Central American Republic by a man named Borla has brought Ken Thurston to Libertago. The night of his arrival, the government printing office is gutted by fire, and the man who had been on Borla's trail, Captain Oliphant, is found dead with a knife in his back. Now, shortly after midnight, in the office of the dead man, Hmm. Look here, Senor Florio. Uh, what is it, Mr. Thurston? A little clue to the connection between Baller and the burning of the government printing office. Here in Captain Oliphant's dossier on him. But I myself studied the dossier from beginning to end. Did you? Yes, and I found nothing. Well, I found something. Look. Several times in his game of hide-and-seek with the law and order boys, Baller posed as a stamp dealer. So? A stamp dealer. He knows stamps. Forgive me if I seem stupid, but uh, many people know stamps. What does that to do with the burning of the government the printing office? Isn't that where the stamps are printed? But I still do not understand. The director of printing may. Senor Priest? Yes, yes. Find him for me. I've got to talk to him right away. <laughs> uh, here. Uh, here, Senor Thurston. This is the way in which the stamps were printed. And this is where the fire started. Now, Senor Pierce, do you agree? That there is a connection between Bola and the fire, yes. But what it is... Uh, Senor, I share Florio's ignorance. Ah, you see, Mr. Thurston. Just look around you, amigo. All the presses destroyed, all the plates melted down, the entire stamp supply reduced to ashes. Senor Pierce, has there by any chance been a new stamp issue recently? Only yesterday. The memoria issue, the first new issue in over two... Oh? That's it. But if it were completely destroyed in the conflagration... If it were completely destroyed, but what if it weren't? 
What if one of the plates were destroyed? What if Bowler had his hands on the new stamps, the only copies in existence? That'd be worth a fortune, a tremendous fortune. Yes, yes. Now get this. It won't be the first time stamps have started a war. Far from it. D'Annunzio, when he sees Fiuma in 1919, the form of Vilno in 1920. Don't you see? Yes, now I begin the to... timing! Everything ties in. Ball has got to be stuck before he can get out of this country to New York. But why New York? Because tomorrow... No, sir, help me, it's after midnight. No, today. The International Stamp Exhibition opens there. From all over the world, stamp collectors will come. Sure, with cash. Where else would Baller head for but New York? Oh, gentlemen, there's a lot to be done. Rapidamente. Ah, everything has been taken care of. We have blocked every possible means of exit from this country. And so, Mr. Thurston, through your magnificent help, Borla will never leave Libertago with those stamps. If he hasn't left already. A lot of time went by between the start of the fire and the start of the blockade. But no planes left. Of this we are certain. Uh, the blockade so. caught him by surprise. Let's hope so. But there's no underestimating Borla and his pals. You can bet he's planned things pretty thoroughly. But he did not reckon with the man called Eggs. I wouldn't even bank on that. Well, there's no point in hanging around here any longer. No. Sleep well, Mr. Thurston. Later. First, I've got to have another talk with that director of printing, Mr. Prius. Thurston, did I dream it or did you really... No, you dreamt it. And you'll also have to dream up all the rest of the money I'm supposed to pay you, unless you can explain what you're doing out here in that hammock. A hiding so that if this terrible borla creeps up on Marie inside the house... You'll scare him away with your snoring. Pagan, when I left you here with Marie, I told you to keep your eyes open. Who can sleep with eyes open? Uh, besides, I made the delicious Marie give me her word that if anything happened, she would wake me. Brilliant. Unfortunately, Mr. Thurston, the same cannot be said of you. No. This adorable, exquisite, ravishing, this senorita, she thinks only of you all night long. Worries, I mean. No. Yeah, finally, at daybreak, she sends me to find out what has happened. So I tell her everything. And with you, Pagan, everything is everything. But she's a brave girl. She deserves to know that her heart has been given to Mr. X, who might die any minute. I get it. That'll leave only you. If you've done half as much damage as I think you have, they'll have to bury you in that hammock. See you later. Darling, darling, hold me close. You had a bad time with it, Marie? Oh, do not think of me. It's you. Ken, I have made up my mind. To what? Come. You have enough responsibilities without having to worry about what Borla may try to do to me. And so, you see? You're packing. Leaving on the plane two hours from now. Well. Why don't you come with me, Ken? You have already done enough. Let the others do the rest. I kind of like to finish what I start, Marie. Then finish it in New York. Pagon says that is where the stamps will end up. Forget about the stamps. You mean they've been recovered? No. But I'm going to send some wires that'll blow up Bowler's entire scheme. Oh, I must not ask questions, I know. But you will tell me all about it later? I'll tell you all about it now. Know anything about philately? Phil oh, the hobby of postage stamps. Mm -hmm. Holy... Seems such an innocent pastime. Marie, in the United States alone, there are 11 and a half million stamp collectors. Last year, they spent close to 45 million bucks in good American money on their collections. A business that big has to have its rules. Yes, of course. When a new issue of stamps is printed anywhere in the world, it isn't recognized by philatelists unless a few of the stamps are actually used in the mail. That kind of makes it really official. Oh. I've just been to the home of the director of printing. Now, listen. Not one stamp of the memoria issue has been used in the mail. No. So all I have to do is to spread word in the proper places and Baller will find that his precious stamps are just so much, oh, so many pretty little scraps of paper. Oh, my darling, I, 
I must not keep you a moment longer. Go, go quickly and send your messages. Yes, Daddy, I think I'd better. But if Senor Florio should phone, will you tell him I'm at the Villa Pacifico? You are not going to your own hotel? Oh, just a precaution. Take every precaution, Ken, for me. Goodbye, Mary. Only until New York. Mr. Thurston, I'm famished. Unless I have some breakfast immediately, I will... Ah. Yes, Pagan, you will what? Huh? Did you say something? For you, Pagan, also a kiss on the forehead. Now off with you and take good care of my kin. <clears throat> for me, a kiss on the forehead. This is the lot of Pagan self. <laughs> Are you trying to make me dizzy? Do you need help? No, I, I mean, yes, I mean... Ooh. Why do we keep on going around and around so much? All these side streets and alleys. You've got to make sure nobody follows us to the Villa Pacifico. We'll be following ourselves if we keep this up. Now, listen. While I'm inside the Villa Pacifico, writing the telegrams, I want you to wait outside, because somebody there may try to stop me. It's up to you to keep them from shooting me in the back. Shoot in the back? Well, why don't you send them from somewhere else? Then I'd learn nothing. But, Mr. Rex... Hold your hat, Pagan. Oh. Just keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. Okay. I've got him, Mr. Thurston. I've got him. But hurry up before he gets me. Please, come on. Good oh, boy. Hang on to him. Only he... No. Right on the button, Mr. X. Who... Who is it? That's a silly question, even from you. This, my friend, is Baller. Thurston, where are we rushing to now? The airport, Senor Florio. To get there before Marie's plane takes off. And I suppose I'll get another kiss on the forehead. Maybe when she finds out how you tackle Bolo, she'll really kiss you. Ah, to me and my countrymen, Mr. Zellschmidt, you will forever be a hero. Zellschmidt, a hero? Huh? Ah, this has been a great day for Libertago. I still wish we'd been able to make Bolo talk. By the way, Mr. X, where did it disappear to while we were trying to find the stamps? Oh, I have to send the police on a little errand. Ah, ah the airport. And uh, ah, there is the plane. But the police, what are they doing here? I told you, Pig, on a little errand. Come on now. Oh, look, look, great excitement around the plane. The police have got Marie. <gasps> Marie! I'll hand you off to you, Pig. I will make you pay dearly for this mistake. How dare you do... Oh, Ken, Ken, darling. Oh, thank goodness you've come. Hello, Marie. Oh, darling, make them put an end to this, this outrage. But my angel, I was the one who sent them here. Oh, no. No, it isn't true. Just as you told Bola to knock me off before I could send those wires. I? Oh, no, darling. Nobody no, else I... knew I was going to the Villa Pacifico, and the wires, incidentally, were phonies. Those stamps had been used in the mails. Some had even been sent to the Universal Postal Union. You devil. Nice act, Marie. Pretended to be scared of Baller when all the time you were working along with him. Uh, Mr. Thurston, the stamps. They have found the stamps in her luggage. You must say, I'll scratch his eyes out. I'll tear him to pieces. That, I'll rip him. That's it, Pagan. Take her in your arms. But look out for that kiss of death. Ah, Mr. Thurston, I cannot express my country's debt to you. As a slight token, I beg you to accept this block of stamps from the memoria issue. No, Senor Flavio. Get them to New York, fast. They'll bring enough to build you a new printing plant. And, Florio, may every one of those stamps be a symbol. A symbol of good government. The kind that, that will survive in spite of men like Borla, who try to get personal wealth and power at the expense of the people. <laughs> And 
our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And next week, I promise you a story that will fairly knock your head off. As usual, there'll be Leon Belasco along as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return, as the man called it, good night. <laughs> Richard Ayer's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's script is written by Maurice Zim. And so, until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles, speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.